Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third video on harmonic pattern scanning for the Forex market and automated Forex trading. If you're following along, um, a quick recap is now that we have a loop that does not look into the future to find patterns that fit the general up, down, up, down of a harmonic pattern. And so that's what this looks like here is we have that up, down, up, down pattern. So that's what we're interested in. But now in this video, we're interested to see is if these price moves meet the requirements to be a certain type of harmonic pattern. Okay, so that harmonic pattern, the first one we're gonna look at is the Gartley pattern. So they fit this uh, these price retracement to certain Fibonacci levels and so we're going to be programming this in right now. And so I'll pull up that pattern on the screen so you guys can follow along. I just happen to have it memorized. So, yeah. So first off, what we need to do is dis define the range that the price movement needs to fall under. Okay, so you'll see there looking at that, that price move AB needs to be 61.8 of price move XA. So how do we decide? Because it's likely not going to be exactly 61.8. But so how can we decide? You know, is if it's close enough. So so what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish an error tolerance. So we we'll call it error allowed. And let's say this is going to be five or let's do 10%. Okay, so we'll allow 10% slippage. So it could be 51.8 or 71.8 actually. And I'm just going to do 10.8, or I mean 10% error, just as a like a starting point. But I'll show you guys later. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 10.0 divided by 100. And so that's our allowable error. And so now we're going to be defining our ranges. Okay. So we know that the, the AB range needs to be, and I'm going to put this as a list, okay, so I'm going to define the minimum value it could take or the, and the maximum. So the minimum value it could take is 0.618, because that's the level it needs to be at, minus the error allowed. Okay, And the maximum value it could be is 0.618 plus error allowed. Okay, So now we have an idea of the percentage range that it can be. But we need to figure out the percentage of what? And it's the percentage of, a, of XA. So we're going to multiply by XA and I'm going to multiply the by the absolute value of XA. I'll demonstrate why I do that specifically a little bit later. Okay, whoops. So now that we have that range, so that's the range for AB. AB needs to fall within these two numbers. Now let's move on and let's do BC. So the BC range has to be equal to, you see BC has to be B between 38.2% and 88.6% of AB. So that will be like this. So we'll do 0 0.382 minus the error allowed. So that's the minimum value. And the maximum value can be as 88.6, so 0 0.886 plus the error allowed. And this one is the percentage of AB, so we multiply by the absolute value of AB. Right? And next is CD. Okay, so the CD range, and this one is a little bit different because it's greater than 100. So CD is between... Um, 1.27 and 1.618 of BC. So to do that, we'll do 1.27 minus the error allowed to 1.618 plus the error allowed. Okay, and then this one is of BC, okay? So the absolute value of BC. So now that we have the ranges that they need to fall under, let's go ahead and actually throw this. We don't want to spend up computation time doing that every loop. So let's only do it if we have a pattern that fits the general 
way it needs to be. So we'll put it under there. Okay, so now that we have that, now we need to make sure that things are in the range that they're supposed to. So we need another if statement. So we'll do if, and we'll do a, b, range, uh, and we're selecting the first element, so the minimum. a, b has to be in between a, b, range, 0 and a, b, 1. Okay? So if that's true, and now we have to program all the other ones to make sure they're true as well. So now, bc um, and so actually what we're going to do here is we're also going to institute this absolute value on these guys because we want to make sure, because we know that these are going to be positive, so we need to make sure that we're looking positive here. They may be negative, but we've already tested to see that it fits the general pattern, so we're not concerned about that anymore. So we'll do BC range 0, uh, BC, and then BC range 1. Okay, and then we're going to add yet another AND statement. I'm just going to copy this. And this one is CD, CD, CD. Oh, and I forgot we want to add that absolute value in here. And CD. And if that's true, so if all of that is true, then we'll plot it, okay? And so to make sure that this works, we want to get rid of, like, we just want to use the whole data set okay because otherwise it's probably not going to find the pattern because this pattern we're putting a pretty tough constraint on it for it to be this pattern so let's run it and see if we find any okay and it looks like we got an error due to the our, our indexing of the lists and so just to get rid of this error what I'm going to do is I'm going to create these lists into arrays which are a little bit easier to work with in the first place so, I mean, it's all personal taste. I could just look up and figure out what I'm doing wrong, but I don't really care to. So, we're just going to just change them into arrays, and it should work. All right, so now that we have those as arrays, now let's test it out. Booyah, we found one. So, check it out. We found our first Gartley pattern. So, this is a Gartley, uh, a bullish Gartley because we've only programmed in the bullish type right now. So this is, a, this is good. So we've calculated and found our first pattern that fits into the Fibonacci ratios that are required of it. And so the next thing we want to do is let's see, what were, were we correct? Like if we had taken that trade, would we have made money? And to do this, we're just going to look in the future a little bit here. And let's look 15 hours in the future on our plot. So our algorithm is not looking ahead, but our plot is, so we can see if we made money. So I'm going to run it, and it should show us the same pattern. So check that out. It looks like we would have lost money, depending on the way you look at this. So if we had entered the trade here, um, we would have made money uh, instantly if we had gotten out within the next two hours. But... If we had stayed in the trade, to this point, we would have lost money. So at this point, it's all about risk management. And so let's go ahead and see if there's another pattern here. Alrighty, so here's another bullish Gartley. And as you can see here, we would have made tremendous money. And I'm actually suspicious because these, uh, these harmonic patterns, they have specific target um, outcomes. So this may be a target level, actually, because my theory about these harmonic patterns is that the more people that believe them, the more people that trade them, then the more people will be causing the market to react in a certain way. So for instance, if everyone, if this comes down to this level and everyone's just like, oh my gosh, it's within the range, you know, it, it's at the Fibonacci level or whatever, and so they enter the trade, and so 
we start to cause this artificial spike and then it hits the first target ratio level and everyone starts to get out so it backs back down but we still have support you know so I know the market is very very liquid and I'm not entirely sure that there's so many harmonic pattern traders that they can actually affect the market but you know it's a nice thought so let's just for shits and giggles let's see if we can find another pattern Alrighty, as you can see here again, if we took this trade, we would have made some cash. So this harmonic pattern thing is looking pretty promising right now. And so the next thing I want to do is right now we've only programmed in the bullish Gartley, but what about the bearish Gartley? You know, what if price is going to go down instead of up and we can take a short position? So to check for the bearish Gartley, we're going to do we're going to copy this exact same setup because it's literally exactly the same. We're only going to have to change one thing. And so let's go ahead and put an else if statement here. And now all we're going to have to do is flip these backwards so that AB is negative. I mean, XA is negative, AB is positive, BC is um, negative, and CD is positive. Okay? And we don't even need to change any of this other stuff. And we should be able to find some bearish patterns now as well. So let's test that out. Looks like that was our first bullish Gartley from the last time. Uh, yet again, another bullish Gartley. Bullish. Okay, guys, so I decided to go ahead and cancel that because we weren't finding any... Um, bearish patterns they're pretty much all bulls so have faith though because this this um, we just need to like allow it more time and we'll find one the other thing is is we're only looking for the Gartley pattern right now so I'm sure that we would find more uh, patterns if we added in like the bat and the butterfly and the crab and the shark and the cipher and such on you know all the other different patterns but right now this is actually pretty good because if you didn't notice, like the majority of the bullish Gartley patterns we found, they would have been good trades. So, um, you know, this might be very lucrative, you know, so because I'm building this as we go. I've already built um, my version, but I'm, I'm doing it just off of memory here. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a function so that we don't need to write it out in our main script. And we're also going to try and try and put our peak finder in a function as well so that we don't have to like you know have our clutter our main script all cluttered up and so I, I uh, really appreciate you guys watching this it means a lot um, I enjoy making these videos and sharing wealth of information with the world so keep watching and go check out my other videos and have a nice day